Hello, dear friends. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Mark Golub. I hope you all had as lovely a Thanksgiving holiday as possible last weekend. And I do hope you continue to do well and feel good and not feel too stressed by the way we're forced to live our lives during this pandemic. And it certainly is stressful. The real understanding of the threat the COVID-19 virus poses began around the middle of March. And we all sort of retreated inside our homes. We stopped interacting with family and friends. Again, sometime in March. And now here we are at the start of December. That's almost nine months we've been living a life of isolation to one degree or another. And this is especially true for those in the older demographic, 70 and older. But it's really true for everyone of any age. And even if we're not acutely aware of the stresses and anxieties caused by a fatal pandemic, we're all anxious and stressed on some level. And of course, I keep saying this is especially true for those who must live alone. That in and of itself is stressful, and all the more so these days. And I truly feel for any of you watching JBS right now who find yourself in such a position. And I have th two things to say to you. Although I can't jump through your screen and give you a hug, though I really wish I could, in some small way, I want you to feel and know I am with you. JBS is with you. You are not alone. And everyone here at JBS cares about you and wishes the very best for you. And the second thing I want to say is that there are real indications that an effective vaccine will be available in the next few weeks, which is a kind of miracle. It wasn't that long ago that people would ridicule the idea of an effective vaccine being produced any time in the near future. People were predicting we would be lucky to have a vaccine by next summer. But lo and behold, two pharmaceutical companies have done large-scale trials on human beings that proved to be effective in creating antibodies that protect against COVID-19 in 95% of those vaccinated. Actually, I personally know three people who've been in these trials. My cousin in Cincinnati, who's a surgeon, is in the Pfizer trial. And two members of my congregation, my Chavura, are in the AstraZeneca trial. And just this week, a CDC advisory committee held a special meeting where it voted to recommend how the first batch of vaccine should be distributed. The CDC advisory committee voted 13 to 1 that the first group to be vaccinated which is designated as 1A, should be some 21 million healthcare workers and 3 million residents of long-term care facilities. These are the two groups proven to be at the highest risk from COVID-19, so it makes perfect sense for these groups to be the first to receive the vaccine. And the belief is that by vaccinating healthcare workers and those in long-term care facilities, not only will lives be saved, but the healthcare burden on our society as a whole will be reduced. The CDC Advisory Committee also proposed that those in Group 1B should include those designated as essential workers which would apply to school staffs, 
the police, grocery workers, and bus drivers. And then group 1C should then focus on all adults older than 65, as well as any adult of any age who has a high-risk underlying medical condition. The CDC will now decide whether to accept the advisory committee's recommendations and then states and local municipalities will make the final decisions about how they will prioritize the distribution of the vaccine. But it's almost certain that the CDC will accept the advisory committee's recommendations and we're talking about the distribution of vaccines even by the end of this month, by the end of December. Just amazing. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, will be meeting next week on December 10th and then again on December 17th to review applications for something called emergency use authorization, known by the letters E-U-A, Emergency Use Authorization, for the two COVID-19 vaccines that were, again, 95% effective in the trials that were just completed. And the Trump administration already has contracts in place to purchase up to 40 million doses before the end of the year. By the way, the vaccine requires two doses, with the second dose being given three to four weeks after the first one. So the first 40 million doses will cover roughly 20 million people, which again will include healthcare workers and residents of long-term care facilities. Then beginning in January, it's expected that every week there will be 5 to 10 million doses available. And that means the vaccine will be distributed every week. So there's a real ray of light at the end of the tunnel. And right now, all of us should continue to follow the rules scrupulously, wearing masks whenever we leave our home or whenever we're with people we don't live with, always maintaining social distance of six feet or more, and always washing hands anytime we return home or touch anything that may be contaminated. And to the extent to which it's possible, keeping our hands out of our eyes, nose, and mouth. And in the coming months, many of us may be vaccinated and this nightmare may actually be coming to an end. We have every reason to be hopeful. So that's the COVID news. What about JBS news? Well, I hope you all know by now that this coming week is a huge week for JBS. We're all terribly excited. This coming Tuesday, December 8th, Comcast Xfinity, the largest cable company in America, will be adding JBS to its channel lineup. But wait, here's a spot we've been running on JBS. If you haven't seen it, I, wanna, I want you to see it now. Tuesday, December 8th, JBS premieres on Comcast Xfinity throughout the country as channel 1684. One small step for JBS, one giant leap for American Jewry. Nice. One small step for JBS, one giant leap for American Jewry. A bit of hyperbole, but there is some truth to it. For the first time, Jews and non-Jews living in major cities throughout America who have Comcast Xfinity as their television provider, will now be able to watch and enjoy and benefit from the array of programming that can only be seen on JBS. 
We're talking cities like Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, all of Southern Florida, Northern New Jersey, San Francisco, Baltimore, Atlanta, Houston, Denver, Detroit, Washington, D.C., Seattle, Portland, and into major Jewish regions of the country, all of Southern Florida and Northeast and Southern New Jersey, and many, many other smaller Jewish communities everywhere in America. And I know because you've written me. Many of you have second residences. Many of you spend part of the year, for example, in Florida, where your television provider is Comcast Xfinity. And up till now, you haven't been able to watch JBS when you're there. But as of this week, this coming week, no longer. As of December 8th, JBS will be channel 1684, 1684. And will be available to anyone who has the voice activated X1 box. So if you enjoy JBS, isn't it wonderful that Holmes will now be able to also see and enjoy JBS? And you know, one of the things that's most gratifying to all of us at JBS is when viewers write us all the time telling us that JBS has given them a connection to Jewish community. It's always all about people. JBS has created a virtual community where Jews feel connected to one another throughout America and online throughout the world. But really I'm talking about America. And you know, while Shabbat services are just a piece of JBS programming, there has never been nor is there now any other television channel in America that televises Friday night and Saturday morning Shabbat services every week. Christian worship services have been on television for years and years on many channels. But weekly synagogue services have never been on American television till JBS. And as you know, JBS actually now televises both Reform Shabbat services from Central Synagogue in Manhattan and in an enormous first on the Jewish scene, Orthodox Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue in West Hampton Beach, New York. And speaking of the Hampton Synagogue, next Friday night, a week from tonight, the Hampton Synagogue will be premiering a fabulous new format of telecast. Just fabulous. It gives me chills even to tell you about it. First, instead of Kabbalat Shabbat services, which is the service that precedes Shabbat every Friday night, the Hampton Synagogue will now be televising a pre-recorded complete Friday evening Shabbat service. And that's not all. Starting next Friday night on JBS, the Hampton Synagogue services will include, will include on-screen subtitling of the Hebrew as each prayer is being recited, along with the English transliteration for anyone who can't read Hebrew, and with the English translation of all the prayers being recited. So as Cantor Hirschstick and the Hampton Synagogue Choir chant and sing the Friday night and Saturday morning service, you will be able to follow along to participate in the Hebrew, in transliteration if you don't know Hebrew, and you can understand the prayers at the same time because the English translation will also be on the screen for you. And this is something Rabbi Mark Schneier, founding rabbi of the Hampton Synagogue, has been determined to do. And the two of us worked 
out the details of what the subtitle should be. And he's premiering this new format next Friday night and next Saturday morning. And kol kavod to Mark Schneier for his vision and his courage and for the gift he's giving to American Jewry through JBS. During this pandemic, when people are simply unable to attend the synagogue in person, Mark Schneier had the courage to be the first Orthodox rabbi to be willing to televise services for all America to see and participate in. And thanks to Comcast's adding JBS this coming Tuesday, beautiful and moving Shabbat services from both Central Synagogue, which does a fabulous service, which I know so many of you adore, and the Hampton Synagogue, with its fabulous new format, will be available to the entire Jewish community, as will the full array of news, information, education, culture, and entertainment programming on JBS each week. So if you have family or friends with Comcast Xfinity, please let them know that as of this coming Tuesday, December 8th, they'll be able to watch JBS on channel 1684 on their X1 box. So that's all the time we have this week. Please make a note, by the way, there'll be two L'Chaim programs this coming week that I really hope you watch. On Wednesday, I'll be talking to an amazing woman, Masha Merkolova, a Jew born in the Soviet Union who didn't learn she was Jewish until she was 16 years old. And she now lives in the United States, is passionate about Israel, and is very upset by the way Jewish college students arrive at college with virtually no knowledge about Israel. And as a result, they're unable to respond to the virulent anti-Semitic anti-Israel movement on campus. So Masha created Club Z, Z for Zionist, for Jewish teens. Masha Merkolova is lovely. She's a dynamo. I hope you watch her this Wednesday night on L'Chaim at 9 p.m. Of course, I always love to hear from you. Email me with any thoughts, comments, or questions at rabbigalab at jbstv.org, or you can always write me at Post Office Box 360, Stanford, Connecticut, 06904. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be safe and stay well, my friends, and Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>